Okay, let's look at problem 1130. Take a get a hint here to get you started. The picture here shows our system. We want to first get the system equations for get them in state space form, and then really the main point of the problem, I guess, is doing the controllability and observability side of it. Um, I want to help you get started on finding the system equations. And one way to do it, since we just got done with Lagrange, would be to use Lagrange. All right, and so let's look at our system. We have two masses. We have spring and damper in between the masses, and the spring and damper from the connecting the lower mass to the ground. Our first variable x2 is from the ground to mass 2, and x1 is up to mass 1. Output y is x1, and it says assume that the masses are negligible. Okay, so we're going to assume our masses are zero. That means then in our Lagrange equations that our T, our kinetic energy then, is just going to be zero. All right, so that makes that part easier, I suppose. And also then our gravity, which would be mgh, that's also going to be zero. And so we won't have any gravity terms in our potential energy. So let's go ahead and write our potential energy. Our potential energy will come from our springs and our um, our two places here. And so we'll have the first one is due to our K1 spring, we'll have one half K1 times its displacement squared. The displacement of spring one is the difference between our two x variables, so x1 minus x2 and squared. Our other en potential energy term is down here for our second spring. Again, one half, now k2, and its displacement is just, we'll just assume that it's um, x2, even though, anyway, we'll assume it's x2. x1 has no um, bearing on this one, and we'll need that squared. Okay, similarly, for our dissipation terms from our dampers, um, we don't need a half here, we have B1, and it's d going to be proportional to the, the speed of its displacement squared, so it's going to be x1 dot minus x2 dot squared, because again, it's just, the derivative is linear, so it, can, it could be, the derivative of x1 minus x2 is x1 dot minus x2 dot, and then we have to square the whole thing, and then also for our second damper, b2 x2 dot squared. All right, so we've got our two terms. We're going to um, write our equation for the two different masses, x1 variable. I have the partial with respect to x1 of our kinetic energy term plus our um, <clears throat> term for our dissipation, one half partial respect to x1 dot of our d here, so b1 x1 dot minus x2 dot squared. And then since mass 1 has the force input on it, we'll have equals u of t or negative u of t, I guess we'll put in there. All right, so carrying out the derivatives, or partial derivatives then, we'll take the partial with respect to x1 of this first thing, 1 half k1, taking the partial um, of the outer of the parentheses, one, or 2 x1 minus x2, and then um, the derivative of the inside is just derivative of x1 with respect to x1, so it's just 1. And then the second term, 1 half k2, and the derivative of x2 with, well, and then 2, well, derivative of x2 with respect to x1 is 0 anyway, so that term is gone. Same thing with the second part, um, plus 1 half, and partial with b1, partial of this term from the outside, I always say is derivative of the outside times derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the outside is 2, and then x1 dot minus x2 dot. Derivative of the inside, again, derivative of this with respect to x1 dot is just 1, so that's gone. Or that's all there is. And then the second one, b2, again, x2 dot, 
derivative with respect to x1 dot is 0 equals negative u of t. And so we get one equation then. Um, the twos and the halves go away. So we have um, b1 x1 dot minus b1 x2 dot plus k1 x1 minus k1 x2 equals negative u of t. So this is our equation um, from our x1 application. We do our x2 application, partial with respect to x2 dot then. And this one has no forcing function, so it'll be equal to zero. And taking these partial derivatives, we'll get one half k1. Taking the derivative outside, two x1 minus x2. Um, and then the derivative inside this time, partial of x1 minus x2 with respect to x2 is a negative one, so we're gonna get negative one in this one equals zero. Kind of um, group terms here. Okay, so we've got two equations. They're not really state equations yet because we have derivatives in x1 and x2, so look, we have two, we need two state equations because we have two first order derivatives and no second order derivatives or anything. But it's not a nice form because we've got x1 and x2 in both of our equations, so we need to do a little bit of algebra to rearrange things. We need to get x1 dot equals something f of x1 and x2 and u with no x no derivatives of x1 or x2. Let's play with these just a little bit, give you an idea, and then we'll set you to do it on your own. But one way to do it would be just to say, let's solve this for x1 dot. So x1 dot, uh, let's just solve it for b1 x1 dot is equal to b1 x2 dot plus k1 x2 minus k1 x1 minus u of t. Okay, and so let's sub let's also solve the second equation then for x2 dot or b1 plus b2 x2 dot equals Okay, and then we'll just take what we got for b1, x1, and substitute in there. It's going to be a little messy. All right. And so we'll bring this over to the other side. We'll get b2, x2 dot equals. And so now we can substitute into our first equation. So here's our, st we'll divide through by b2, and we'll have a state equation. Um, for our second state equation, we need to find x1 dot and we can substitute now into our x1 dot equation. We can solve into our x1 dot equation at, for our x2. Looks like we're gonna have to solve for x2 and um, get another state equation. So let's go ahead and solve this as a state equation. x2 dot is equal to k2 over b2 x2 minus one over b2 u. Okay, so this is our state equation, x1 dot is equal to dividing through by b1 x2 dot plus k1 over b1 x2 minus k1 over b1 x1 minus u of t. Okay, and let's then substitute in to that for what x2 is, and we should have x1 dot with no derivatives on. Okay, and so our state equations, so this is our second state equation. So our A matrix then, x1 coefficient of x1 is negative k1 over b1, x2 is k1 over b1 plus k2 over b2, um, our B coefficient of u, negative 1 over b1 plus negative 1 over b2, and then our x2 equation. Well, I think once you've got that, then you can go ahead and do your controllability observability criterion on your own, and this should give you a good starting point.